Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there, all of you childish Gambinos and Post Malones. I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name is Mikey, and welcome to episode 105 of Draw with Mikey, the super casual midweek season where I just kind of do whatever in the background. Maybe I've got some art going on or some sketchbook work. Really, it's my opportunity just to talk to you guys, catch up, and read whatever you've got to say in the comment section. And maybe you guys are just getting some work done in the background as well. Spoiler alert, swear word alert, you know the theme. Uh, last week, we covered a few bits, including unfortunately the passing of Stan Lee, and just opening up your comment section right now, I dare say that's probably going to be the majority theme. So let me go ahead, because, you know, um, let's celebrate the fact he had an excellent life, he died at a ripe old age, and probably, you know, probably lived okay. Um, well deserved, but you know, he had a good running. Um, so let me just dive in, and we need to get back onto the prompts and questions. So, uh, una question, which has kind of just been on the back of my mind, I was a friend of mine WhatsApped me this a while ago. Uh, guys, obviously the... Wait, what's the word for this? The miniaturization of popular gaming consoles from back in the day is uh, really big vibes. The NES, the SNES, and now the PlayStation 1. Um, PlayStation 1 was kind of really in during my formative years, so I've probably got stronger opinions there than I did about the NES and the SNES, which I just thought were really nice gimmicks and really didn't care one way or the other. However... Uh, this lineup of games that got announced on the PlayStation 1 is a real mixed bag, and I know a lot of people are unhappy about it. In fact, this is even old news that maybe you guys have had this conversation a hundred times, so basically let me get to the point. Um, it doesn't have to be a list of 25, that's probably too much. But I'm actually quite curious to know, if say you could only pick, um, let's say, five games to go, oh that's quite tight, maybe ten if you need a bit more help. Um, five or ten key games but we're going to go on to the PlayStation 1 classic for you guys what would they be because some of the PS1 games that are making it out there on the moment are just they're just crap like they're not like those big iconic ones from back in the day oh also guys good morning and also strongly recommend if you're going to get some artwork done or just sit down for a ramble grab yourself a cup of tea it's going to make all of a difference oh side story uh, did I mention this last time? Maybe I did. Uh, but Yorkshire Tea, uh, the current brand of tea which I promote and love, um, they have like an evening blend for when you want a cup of tea but you still need to go to bed. It's not amazing, but it's okay. However, in contrast, they do a morning blend. Did I say this? I can't remember. I've been telling everybody. Which is the same kind of Yorkshire tea, but it's extra potent. Oh my god, this shit is so good. Um, so, without further ado, what's going on with you lovely lot in the comment section? Uh, NTY Matter says, I will miss him. His cameos are the best parts in all the movies. How always, nice video. Well, thank you very much, NT Matter. I think we're all going to miss Mr. Lee himself. And uh, Cloneboy245 says, rest in peace, Stan Lee. Your work will live on for generations. Absolutely, dude. Elmer's Glue says, Stan Lee. This is definitely the theme of today's episode, guys. So, um... <laughs> I will try to throw some PS1 opinions out there just to mix this up, but Stanley not only participated in creating a world full of characters dear to millions and millions of people, he also served as a bridge to make us feel more connected to that world. Through Stan's soapbox messages within the comics and the many cameos he made in the movies and video games, he had so much charisma that he became the face of Marvel that everyone knew and loved. Yeah, that's the thing, he wasn't just a creator of these things, he was a charismatic cha um, chap, and uh, he was one of a few people kind of that took the the genre of the superhero and a superman and he gel he get girl from he gave them real life issues and personal quandaries and um imperfect personalities as well which then became the mainstay of all really good um to get your teeth into comic book heroes in the future afterwards so yeah lots lots of what he's done anyway it takes a special kind of person to bring so many people of all ages races and genders together like he did excelsior yeah, absolutely, Elmers. Uh, Woot Woot says, Happy birthday, Mikey. Oh, yeah, guys. Thank you so much. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know if you can tell. Um, yes, I went from being in my early 30s over into my mid 30s. So, yeah. One foot in the grave. Oh, that was. Oh, my God. That was a hell of a television series. 
million times better than men behaving badly. Thank you very much. Fight me. Um, it's been almost a month. Yeah, it's been a while. Absolutely, woot woot. Anyway, uh, you continue to say, Before anybody gets on my ass about being an impatient jerk, I just mean I missed listening to the DWMs for the past few weeks. It's fun to hear what everyone has to say, and I missed hearing it. Oh yeah, no, me too. Glad you're feeling better, Mikey. Thank you very much. So am I. Hashtag hardcore crew. Hashtag DWM. Edit. Is that a JoJo reference? Uh, Siri Tani says, rest in peace to the man, the myth, and the legend, Stan Lee. Indeed. And goodbye says, hello and my name. Great draw, Mikey Mega Mega. Also, RIP. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. Last time, just did a little tribute sketch uh, on the tablet for Stan Lee, of course. Um, and right now in the background, uh, oh yeah, just playing around with those saturated colours. So, this whole, I'm not saying her correctly, by the way, Akali, 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 Alkali. Anyway, this um, KDA, which you guys have taught me means kill death assist, um, and they are just League of Legends characters with K-pop star skins actually sung by K-pop stars. That confuses the fuck out of me. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. But basically, we just went through a phase in the art community where everybody was drawing uh, Akali. She was the new Bowsette of the moment. So I wanted to have a play as well. Um, as you can see, I just failed miserably trying to make a girl with a... Um, uh, wait, I want to say balaclava. You know, with like a um, bandana over her face, actually look female because I kept making these kind of manly things. Although whilst I was working, I was trying to have a go at a bit more of a kind of angular female design at first to try to kind of sell something a bit different, a bit more cartoony and illustratively. Completely sacked it off in the end anyway and just had a go painting. But yeah, I just wanted to test what the vibe was with these really saturated neon colours. Um, I kind of like it, but I certainly haven't perfected that side of things. We'll come back to begin, uh, that again in the future, I'm sure. Uh, Gus Schoenmaker says, The Marvel Universe exists out of so many strong and amazing heroes, but there's only one real superhero, and that is Stan Lee. Rest in peace, Stan Lee. Rest in peace, Excelsior again. And Takahatu says, Hello, Mikey. Glad to see you again. Awesome portrait right there. Thank you, Takahatu. In celebration, allow me to sip some of his tea. Mmm. R.I.P. Stanley, absolutely. And EDA says, the legend never die. I know, man. Uh, Roger the Striker says, Mikey, can you draw Mavis Vermilion on Draw Easy Simple? Oh, Draw Simple Easy. Uh, or Draw, I can't remember how it is. D-S-E? D-E-S. Oh, there's been so many um, requests to bring that back, um, which is great. Thank you so much, guys, for getting involved and letting me know what you like. Um, up for it. The kind of window of time in my life where I do that is filled with uh, tablet reviews and uh, the hardware side of things. Um, so yes, I, I want to, I want to, but um, yeah, let's see how we go. I'm going to have to try my best to make it when I can. Ask Kicker RPA says, good video and rest in peace, Stanley. Thank you, good sir. And the Gaming Poo says, hi, good sir. Well, hello, Gaming Poo. It's been a while and I've been waiting for three weeks. I knew, a, I knew you were sick, but I missed DWM. Oh, and that's why I look for you in Twitch. Oh, Papa Fries. Hashtag sip of liquid. Hashtag hardcore crew. Not everybody loves tea, but if you're one of those people, you better pe keep quiet about it, basically. Uh, Anna Mims says, Mikey, you beautiful man with a beautiful soul. Oh, my. Anna Mims. Wow. You've got me on your side. What do you want? I hope you're doing well. This is really touching. And hashtag early squad. Oh, thank you so much. It was just a really nice message. That's really kind. Uh, Halley Shots says, rest in peace, Stanner Man. And Zero Two also says, I miss Stan Lee. Asmodeus04 says, dude, it's been a while. Seeing Stan gone was a sad thing. I'm glad you gave him a nice send off. Thank you, man. Loads of people did better for that. But that was just kind of my input. Kind of, I don't know how to put it. It wasn't drawing the... It wasn't drawing the piece that, for me, was the, the thing. It was spending the time doing anything focused on him, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It was the time I wanted to give him, out of respect, more than come out with an art piece at the end of the process. Um, Sinity says, good video, Mikey. Thank you, Sinity. And Aaron Johnson says, he'll always be remembered. Speed Princess 01 says, glad to see you back, Mikey. Oh, I'm glad to be back, don't you worry. Uh, we all miss Stanley with all of our heart, and as for what I'm drawing, I'm teaching myself some not YouTube friendly stuff. Oh, Speed Princess, I have no idea what you mean. It's family safe around here. As everybody knows, this is a Christian channel on a Christian server. Front page of Twitch, zero deaths on any video games. Uh, starting out slow, just a couple of OCs and bunny suits and certain types of sweaters. Certain types, eh? But yes, also my friend told me about uh, Draw Semba, where you draw every day of the month of December. Just thought I'd let you know. Speed Princess. Obviously, um, people often say, you know, 
try to draw every day and uh, keep it up as much as you can. And that sounds like great advice. But for me personally, anything, any one thing every day, short of, you know, eating food and breathing and all of the basic requirements, is just a great way to hate (laughs) hate doing almost anything. Uh, Tyler Sermon says Stan Lee will live on through his cameos. Oh, Tyler, more than that, he'll live on through the massive body of work he's produced. He's more than just his own cameos in his own properties. And Jameson Larson says, uh, I'm a day late, but happy birthday, Mikey. Thank you so much. Simon says, take a sip of tea. Ah, really? You're Simon Sezzing me? Is this what happens when we're running out of um, those take a sip keywords? What was the last one? Claymore. Draw Claymore. Mm. I mean, I'll drink the tea, but I'm not drinking the tea just because you said. Um, FYN Finia says, Hi, Mikey. I wonder if you could... Hello, FYN. I wonder if you could do a tutorial video on how to draw chainmail. I drew mine, but it's so hard to draw one by one. I wonder if you have a faster method. Oh, dude. I was drawing some chainmail just the other night um, for a Mikey the Gathering card. I think it was an apple juice paladin with screws for swords or something really random. Um, So I do the... uh, I do... C's in C's and inverse C's, how to put it. I draw a load of C's in a line, and then I draw a load of C's in a line b- below it. And I make those C's like really light or a bright colour. And then I draw a load of wrong way round C's. What letter is that? It's not a letter. Uh, but I draw a load of wrong way round C's and a line in the middle between them to try to create that kind of link effect. So you kind of have to get into this vibe of working in rows. This is probably going to be... In fact, you know what? Let me just save all of my answer through tutorial. It's a great suggestion, thank you. But I've realised it's easier explained when you've got a pencil and paper than when you're doing some audio. Um, wait, where am I? Okay, um, I drew mine, but it's so hard to draw. Oh, yeah, I wonder if you have a faster method. Yeah, I do have a method. I'll see if sharing it is of any help, good sir. Oh, or madam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Did you just assume my gender? Oh, Jesus. Uh, the guy in the corner says, rest in peace, Stanley. And Furious Melon says, there's one thing I'll never get used to. No more Stanley movie cameos. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be the same, but you know what? Um, we're having pretty much the last major Avengers movie now in this particular phase of a Mar- Marvel franchise anyway. It's going to be a long old time before that gets rebooted, and whatever happens afterward is certainly just going to be a different animal regardless. So, um, you know, I think it just ties into the great changes that come for us all, right? And to kind of paraphrase No Country for Old Men, like, uh, the fact that you don't like change, I mean, I don't like change, who doesn't? is nothing new. Every generation has had the same melancholia about the world that they knew slowly disappearing and the times changing. Every generation has experienced that feeling. It's it's just the way of life. And um, yeah, something, something, the guy goes around murdering people. Oh my God, you know what? I need to watch Old Country from Old Men again. It's such a good film. I'm going on sidetrack here. I know um, Red Dead Redemption's really, really, Red Dead Redemption 2 is really, really big now. Whenever anybody says to me, um, are you going to play RDR? It just reminds me of The Simpsons, where Bart goes to the other school for gifted children, and they have that joke where it's like, RDRR? Anyway, anyone? I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I think of. I think of The Simpsons whenever we talk about Red Dead. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that, yeah, I'm probably going to play that in 2019, hopefully sooner than later. Um, But I really want to get into the Western vibe. I haven't watched good Western films in a really long time. It's kind of gone out of fashion, I guess. But there are some fucking brilliant ones. And in my mind, No Country for Old Men counts as a Western. It counts as a really, really interesting one. So uh, I need to watch that film. Coen Brothers, they know what they're doing. Um, So I would say, nobody's asked, Denis Villeneuve... Maybe the Coen... If I had to pick a rough top five in no particular order, best directors would be Denis Villeneuve, Coen Brothers, Ridley Scott, as long as you've got the right DP, um, and the best cinematographers. Uh, Who did Seven? Fincher? David Fincher, and probably Christopher Nolan. Those directors are just... Oh, they make... They make the good stuff, you know, the good films. Anyway... Not talking about films, talking about PlayStation video games. My selection, there we go, we're coming back. My selection for the PS1 games, uh, I'm not going to give you 25, but certainly you want the games that really helped um, let people know, because the PlayStation generation, that was the one where um, games in my head really became elevated, and you realise that games can be more than games, they can challenge cinema. Final Fantasy VII, that plot was really something else. Metal Gear Solid, my god, that was just a fucking incredible action thriller movie. You just happened to be playing the character whilst it was happening. Um, 
then Final Fantasies 8 and 9, obviously. Um, Gran Turismo 2? Come on. Come on, Gran Turismo 2. How many hours did people put into that? It was fucking amazing. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Um, I guess whichever the best one was, I'd probably just stick with Crash Bandicoot 1. Uh, whoop, idea, idea. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and... God, what else can I... Oh, Tekken 3. My apologies, Society. Tekken 3. Um, for fairness, maybe there's a Mortal Kombat game for, to balance it, but I was definitely a Tekken boyo back in my day. Uh, what else was there? Intelligent Cube, I kind of remember. I don't know if it's worthy of being a game in its own right. Hmm. Maybe you guys can uh, come up with the suggestions of the ones I'm missing, because I know there's loads of fantastic games on there. Um, but you're not allowed to do any ports, so you can't say things like uh, Chrono Trigger, the one that got on the PlayStation, because I'm pretty sure that came out on the SNES. Did it? Did it? Did Chrono Trigger come out on SNES? Anyway. Um, yeah, what are your suggestions uh, for the PS1 titles that did the fun? Oh my god, of course! I'm so sorry, guys. Resident Evil 2. Bloody absolutely. Resident Evil 2 and others. Oh my god. Let me just sip this tea. This is what happens when we do uh, a DWM recording in the morning. I hope you guys are doing well. Anyway, uh, Axia Watt says, Happy birthday, Mikey. If the next DWM is on time, it will be up on my birthday, the 21st. Um, yeah, Wednesday upload. Fantastic. Happy birthday, man. Welcome to being 22, Axio. Anyway, Proko also does some really good anatomy tutorials. Combined with your, combined with you and Alfonso Dunn's tutorials, uh, they've helped me realizing, realize the importance of the bones and knowing where the muscles connect to them, because these relationships don't change no matter the angle. Essay, I know. Axio, it's just short enough to be cool in my book, and yeah, this is what I keep saying to people. If you kind of hang around on here, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, and I get loads of really kind messages. But what I always say is make me one of many people. Um, if you really like following along with what we do here, have a look at other artists and the way they do things and just spread that kind of influence of getting uh, artists talking about how they do things into your own system and you really find your own way. Absolutely. Uh, Tojo Misoge says, Hi Mikey, I like your tutorials. Well, thank you Tojo. It helped me a lot. Thank you very much. Less than free. Oh, fantastic. And Naru123 says, Happy birthday, you magnificent beast. Naru, you charmer. Uh, Rebecca Israel says, Hi Mikey, amazing art and rest in peace Stan Lee. Thank you and indeed. And Jato Proven says, Goodbye Stan the man Lee. Akemi Homoda says, I never knew about the man, not not do I care what he contributed to the world, but goodbye, Stan. You're in a better place now. I don't even quite understand. I'm assuming you're trying to be kind. And Velocity Crouch says, Excelsior! Uh, Vasim Tamul has just loads of thumbs up. Thank you very much, Vasim. And Brotac MTB says, Like. Well, I like you too, good sir. Uh, Lim Porter says, Mikey, it's good to hear from you again. Thank you very much. Oh, Liam, my goodness. Uh, Thank you very much, my man. And I successfully completed Inktober the first time and saw a huge improvement in my art. Hope you're feeling better. For me, I'm close to being homeless and it's not fun. Oh, shit. What's going on, man? Dude, I wish you all the best of your challenges in whatever form they come to. Um, side note, well done for smashing for Inktober. I'm really glad it's also helped your skills. Swing to roundabouts, eh? Uh, Jericho Cross 97 says, I'm glad you're back. So am I, Jericho. Can't wait for those amazing tutorials. You should give us another prompt like that one last time. Hashtag chicken time. Hashtag Mikey Mega Mega forever. Oh my god. Don't say Mikey Mega Mega forever. Because that just makes me think of um, Joel Schumacher's Batman forever. <laughs> Hashtag sip of tea, hashtag notification squad, hashtag Mikey's back, hashtag tutorial. Thank you so much, Jericho. Uh, Type of Grade Drake says, hey, Mikey, hello, Type of Grade. I think it would be cool if you did a drawing animal series soon, breaking down animal anatomy. Yes, that would be very cool. Indeed. Oh, God, I used to sit down and fill the sketchbook from time to time with just a page of different animals. Oh, those days are long gone. I need to bring that back. And Samurai Reflection says, I will always watch for Marvel and DC movies. Will you? Uh, they are all awesome in their own right. I'll always appreciate Stanley's spirit. We truly would have understood each other. Or maybe we do. <gasps> I think I know what you mean about Stanley bringing together and creating understanding through characters. Sure, and shared experiences and drawing people out into different worlds when they have trouble maybe in the real world when they're growing up. So I'm totally with all of that. Hmm. But I don't automatically... Um, respect or accept any movie um i'm quite i'm not mean about film but i am relatively critical about film i do <laughs> it's just one of my sad things i do tend to have opinions about movies uh winter rafe says about to change your mind on the best savant song oh shit oh yeah so i said for um 
uh, Sledgehammer used to be my favourite savant song, and then that moved over to the horror, which is v- a beast. You are saying that Starscream Forever is the best savant song. Winter Wraith, putting yourself on the line here, mate. I'm going to, because I don't know which one that is off the top of my head. I'm sure I've heard it. So I'm going to pop that in Google, and afterward, oh, it's from the Overworld album. Okay, so that's still quite a strong album. And after I uh, finish this DWM, I'm going to play that song, and then I'm going to have opinions about you as a person. Max Chaos says, hey, Mikey, hello, Max. I was wondering, could you make a tutorial on how to separate line art into its own layer? I know you've already done this particular tutorial. However, I'm broke as hell and can't exactly afford Photoshop at the moment. So can you redo the tutorial using MediaBang? Not many people use it, so it's hard to find specific tutorials. Oh, I see. You know what, that's a really, really good idea. Um, Not just for that, but in terms of, because obviously, as we kind of mentioned, I haven't started yet, but I will start taking a look at um, alternative software reviews as well as the hardware for art things. And uh, I think there's a load of key functions which will help me understand how I'm going to air quotes grade all these softwares. Like, can I use it to separate layers the same way I'm used to? Can I separate line art? Can I do certain tricks of a trade? Can I get nice brush strokes? Can I complete a piece of art without being completely stressed out by some bad interface? Things of that nature. So, uh, yes, Max, I will just make a very quick note of your comment. Bear with. Let's just go over here. Lovely. And Narian TX, since since you mentioned it, I am Water Tiger on Twitch. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Hashtag hardcore crew. Hashtag sip of tea. Indeed. <laughs> Tony Torres says, Top of the morning and evening to you, Mikey. Thank you very much, Tony Torres. You've got a very Irish sounding name, <laughs> Mr. Torres. I finally caught up on my DWMs, and what a trooper you were for my um Hashtag number 100. My god, man, I was about to, I was so sad about the news to Stan Lee. Thank you, by the way. Um, I think what resonated with me the most was how every character of his were met with a life-changing event and how these characters were defined. Oh, yeah, dude, that's exactly what I was trying to express a minute ago. Absolutely. Yes. And how these characters were defined with the choice to become a victim to it, or villainous, or if they used it to protect others from experiencing the same fate. Heroic. Ah, Tony, you've nailed it way, way better than what I was trying to get at. 100% agree. I also see many of his great qualities as I see with you. (laughs) 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 Ah, Tony. (laughs) Absolutely. That's uh, that's just absolutely tickled me. That was quite a surprising sentence. Um, No, uh, I am... I, I mean, I would be proud to be a fraction of a man that Stanley is. That's very, very kind of you to say, <laughs> but I somewhat doubt it. Um, and I appreciate the love, optimism, optimism and genuine encouragement. You've already um, regarded your fans as Stanley, um, as Stanley has done for his peers throughout the years. Cheers and wishing you all the best. Rest in peace, Stanley. Rest in, uh, hashtag sympathy, hashtag alcohol. Oh, Tony Torres, that was, that was a surprisingly nice comment. That really caught me out of left field. Um, dude. Well, you know me, like, you kind of get the vibe by the sound of it. I, I love the arting, I love what it does, and I think it's really good for people to express creatively, even if it's not art and it's something else. I think everybody needs a thing to get them into the zone. But we know that, I think it's just really good. Uh, but yeah, dude, it's easy to be enthusiastic about stuff you love, I think. <laughs> really kind of. Oh, dear. Wow. Blushing. J Arts says, Hey, Mikey, I love the Stanley portrait. Do you practice this type of drawing frequently? J Arts. Not frequently. Not from a Jedi. Um, Although I do enjoy doing it from time to time. So obviously um, I've got a bit of a reputation for drawing a lot of sexy girls in an anime style and keeping things relatively lewd. Um, But in terms of an individual who likes to do art, um, oh my god, yeah, not all the time. I've got to break it up. Different types, different styles, different things. Um, very much uh, I enjoy doing that I don't get much time to do it but yeah I do like to do studies of people from time to time it helps keep my brain from just melting from too many big circular boobs and uh, nerd taku also says well nerd taku you've got the exact this you've got the exact same image on your profile as J arts and your comment is right below J arts are you the same person 
logging in with a separate account. That's so weird. Yo, Mikey, great artwork. Thank you. You really need to give yourself more credit. You think that your drawings are bad, but in reality, it's better than 90% of people's artwork on YouTube. Oh, you're too kind, good sir. You're too kind. But no, there are some amazing people doing art. Dude, seriously. Laszlo Sademi says, the Huey on screen seems to have a power supply failure. I had a similar... Oh, God, yeah. Did I complain about my monitors last time? I must have... Um, I had a similar issue with my LG monitor, and it doesn't have a pen input, but I solved the issue by replacing its original adapter with an old printer's power supplies. They're around the same voltage. After replacing the only two capacitors in my monitor, one for the boost converter and for the backlight, it didn't work out. It does work fine, and I no longer have to use cheap-ass power bricks that partly covers up the other sockets on my strip. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure if I'm the type of person to try replacing capacitors, but if there's a how-to video on the internet, as far as I'm concerned, that tablet is dead, so I'll happily like crack it open with a screwdriver and at least have a go. Oh, and rest in peace, Stanley, indeed. Oh, and Clip Studio Paint, you find it faster than Krita and better layout. Yep, as mentioned, dude, it's on my kind of um, radar of things to review. Clip Studio have sent me a copy, but you know, it's... I'm just behind, I'm so behind of the videos. We've still got lots of physical things to review, um, so we're not going to fit in the uh, softwares this year, I dare say. Uh, Dark Shadow Saver says, Thank you to you, I'm actually making my own desktop for computer and drawing areas. I'll be getting into digital drawing. Also, Stan Lee will forever be my hero. Dark Shadow Saver! Oh my god, are you a hands-on type of person? I made my own desk at university back when I was studying um, just to fit a particular odd nook in my room in one of the houses, and... I really fucking enjoyed that. Making custom furniture for yourself is really fucking nice, although the amount of hours you have to put into the workshop is quite long. Oh, dude, I feel you. Uh, Jordan Martel Martellado says, Happy birthday. Why, thank you, Jordan. I watch a lot of your videos, Mikey, but I need to get back with drawing. I jump in and out a lot, but I've slowly been finding my own style, and I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you so much, man. And wish me luck on my little date. <gasps> Jordan. I'm assuming you've been on your date since then and now. Do you want to give us an update? How did it go, good sir? Well, I hope. First one in years. Also, happy day to all. Jordan Martellaro putting himself back out there. Hats off. Sherian M says, Mikey. Hello, Sherian. I've just been watching some of your older DWMs, episodes 50 to 60. Wow, thank you. In an attempt to hashtag call call crew for more. <laughs> Why would you do that? And every time I'm just about to jump into the comments with answers to your questions until I realise the episode's a year old. Love your videos as always. Ah, oh, thank you. Wow. That's, that is really hardcore. Uh, Brendan Hall 001 says, One artist to another. Go ahead, Brendan. I'm getting there, trust me. Stan Lee was an icon, and he's one of my many inspirations to make superheroes and amaze, astonish, and marvel, pyro, marvel people. There we go. No pun intended. He will surely be missed. Oh, absolutely. It's like they say in the epic rap... Battery video, um, where like, uh, what's some of the lines where he's just like, and bear in mind, obviously, the Fantastic Four movies aren't really like that, but he's like, the four will always be fantastic, the Hulk will always be incredible, the marks you've left on people's lives will stay forever and be indelible, something like that. I think I've misdone it, but um, yeah, it really sums it up right. Like, you know, his works are out there, uh, useless but kind of useful, says he still appears in Avengers 4. Um, yeah, I did hear that he's filmed a load of his. Or had filmed a load of his cameos way ahead of time. He's with Spidey now. What? What? <laughs> Sorry. That's really... I have no idea what you're implying. Did somebody who plays Spider-Man die? Instead of saying... Useless but kind of useful. Instead of saying he's in heaven now or he's you know, in a better place. You're saying he's with Spidey now. I don't understand what that means. Maybe it's um, an in-joke that's over my head. Spider-Man! Uh, Lowell Brunk says, Glad you are well again, Mikey. A uh, quick question. Oh, man. You know what? I guess one man can make a difference. Enough said. Oh, Stan. Anyway, Lowell Bunk says, glad you're well again, Mikey. Quick question for you, what kind of graphics display would you suggest for somebody who just wants to start digital? Ooh, if you're just starting and you want a graphics display, you want a pen to screen, but you want it to be within budget and you're just starting out so you don't need the world's best thing, um, the kind of market shifted a bit over the last year and a half to what it used to be. Now everybody's finally caught on to people like you wanting this kind of situation. And a lot of people are making these kind of 13 to 15 inch range of tablets, um, which actually have buttons on the side of the tablets that you can program. Um, fairly cheap screens, um, but otherwise do do the job. So, for example, I'm still trying to just uh, scratch away on an XP Pen Artist 12. I know Ross Draws has... Um, 
just done, I just saw earlier on Instagram, Ross Draws does, is doing a giveaway for that exact model, the XP Pen 12. I'll be giving mine away, of course, as well, once I get a replacement for it. Um, but yeah, go follow his Insta and have a look. Um, but as well as that, I think um, Hueyon now have a very good small range. Even the Hueyon Canvas range now do a 13-inch model. You know what? I was thinking, I probably wanted to do a review of uh, um, Hueyon's flagship, the Canvas Pro 22. But I'm really thinking maybe uh, not doing that and doing a review of the Canvas Pro 20 instead because I think there's already reviews about the 22 out there, obviously. But the thing about the Pro 20 is it's using all of the same technology, all of that new tech as the Pro 22. It's got the same setup in the rear with the cables going sideways instead of down, which is a big game changer. Um, it's the same new pen, all that sort of stuff. But it's like $300 cheaper than the uh, 22 and it's a 19.1 uh, 19.5 inch uh, monitor screen space which having personally used the GT190 uh, GT191 as well as the GT220 um, I know that that is plenty to work over a really long period of time that is enough screen so I think I'm going to step down I'm probably going to look at the 20 instead of the 22 because I think from a buying guide from people who are lining up to Christmas and wanting to get the most they can out of their budget Cutting out something that's still equally as good, but only mildly smaller for the sake of saving $300 is probably a big deal to a lot of people. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, um, lower bunk, I've not really massively answered your question. I've gone on a tangent of mine, but I am going to hopefully put together a video which summarizes all of the little niggly things and buying kind of... All, basically, all of my experience of tablets. I want to just do a kind of buyer's guide video where I don't necessarily, I mean, I will compare the different brands and give you my personal opinions, um, but really just give you an overview of some key things you should be looking out for in any tablet, um, depending on kind of where you are in your drawing life, um, just to kind of help put people on the right path for, you know, because a lot of them are a lot of money, right, for their kind of buying plans for Christmas. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Q&As that I've got lined up to kind of fit into there. Nice. Um, Colga TV says, now I think people watch Marvel movies only because of his cameos. Indeed, there was a genuine pleasure um, at looking out for Stanley and all of his cameos, indeed. Adios, Stanley. Descansa en paz gracias. Ti tuve una buena infancia. Jonathan V. Um, something along the lines of him having a really good effect um, on your childhood. Uh, and goodbye. Yeah, absolutely. And Keshev Colonel says, Stanley should have stayed with us until the conclusion of... Inf yeah, he should have, Keshev. He should have stayed with us until the conclusion of Infinity War. What an asshole. Absolutely. Alas, he couldn't watch the conclusion anymore. Rest in peace. I know, I know, I'm only kidding. Um, oh, Natsu Dragneel says, Hi Mikey, how's your life? Natsu, I'm glad you asked. Um, I really just want to say something that I've discovered recently on the side. It's nothing to do with the comments, but I really just want to mention this thing. Um, anyway, you're saying, I wanted to say thanks for drawing the legend and believe me, your art is awesome and it's legendary. Oh, and happy birthday, Mikey. Dude, you're too kind. And happy birthday, Mikey. I hope your wishes and dreams come true. Peace out. Oh, Natsu, they did. I have very small wishes and dreams now. The older you get, the smaller you make them. Um, but my wishes and dreams were I wanted a new art book that really got me into art. So I got, where is it? Spectrum 24. Um, an internet friend of mine, uh, Dave Greco Art, who's actually a um, proper industry artist working for Crowfall, I think, at the moment. Um, he has his own YouTube channel. He is now published in Spectrum 25, which you can't get in the UK until about the 6th of December, sadly. So I thought, oh, I'll pick up issue 24. And, oh, my God. I never even heard of these Spectrum series of books before. But they're just, they only look at the finest art from the finest concept artist, digital artist, video game artist, fine artist. Um, all, all modern stuff. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's such a good book. Anyway, basically, flicking through a few pages of that is brilliant. It just supercharges you. Um, it's like the very, 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 very best of Pinterest in a really, really nicely printed book. Uh, what am I getting on it? Oh, yeah. And also, with Stanley in mind, I got Spider-Man. Spidey. And I also picked up a copy of... These are my birthday gifts to myself, seeing as you've asked. Copy of... Uh, I want to say Colossus. That's not right. Sorry, I'm just looking. Oh, Shadow of the Colossus. I was right, yeah. Apparently the Shadow of the Colossus game is really, really good as well. So I got that for the PS4. Um, anyway, peace out to you, Natsu Dragneel. But how is your life? Right, guys. I really just want to update you on something. This might be old news. And this might be something that everybody's known for years. Um, but if you've got a Kindle, fucking hell. Right. I've got a Kindle paper right, paper white. I had it for um, maybe, what, like a year and a half, couple of years? I don't know. I had like an old Kindle, and unfortunately, 
even though the like the original kin- Kindle with like the actual number pad and all that stuff at the bottom, that travelled the world of me, lasted through all sorts of problems, and then one day I just drew the curtains and I knelt on it by accident and I cracked the screen. So anyway, I got a Kindle Paperwhite, and because I had all my books on the first Kindle, the screen was fucked, but it still plugs in. I I never went online with my Paperwhite. I just transferred all the books across. So that was absolutely fine. Been using that for like a year and a half. Two weeks ago, I went online and it was like, blah, 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 connect your Kindle. So I was like, fine. I went on to, I picked up the Kindle, turned on the Wi-Fi, let it connect to my Amazon account to see if I wanted to put any more books on it. And the first fucking thing that happened when it connected to my, swear word alert, by the way, when it connected to my Amazon account is Amazon put a fucking advert bar on my fucking Kindle. Oh my God. So... On my home screen, there's just this banner at the bottom for like, oh, be first for new Amazon books, click here, blah, blah, blah. And then when you go into your library and you actually scroll through your list of books, this bar takes up like um, one fifth of the screen space. So all of my options, like I've just got a little bit less to look at because there's this fucking promo banner. Anyway, spent ages trying to see how I could get rid of it, couldn't. Um, so I went into the uh, Amazon web chat desk. And bear in mind, this is a Kindle Paperwhite. It's not like a tablet or anything like that. It's it's just for reader. And um, on the web help thing, I was just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I've been using this Kindle. I really like it. Everything's fine. But recently, um, I actually went online with it. And now there's this advert banner that I can't seem to get rid of. Would you mind just pointing me through how to do it? The person on the end of this, I'm going to give you a really quick version, guys, because I don't want this to turn into another trigger warning situation. Uh, but I've, I was just talking about this the other night online, and just it's really got to me. So the person on the end was just like, um, okay, so I think you want to get rid of this particular ba- banner, is that correct? And I'm just like, yes, good. Uh, so she was like, go into your settings, and then she started describing um, stuff that's not there. And I was just like, right, I don't actually have any of those menu options. I can go settings, all settings, blah, blah, blah. And she kept saying stuff that wasn't there. Please click on this. And I was like, okay, that that's not on my Kindle. And bear in mind, to start this web chat, they can look at your account and they could see my Kindle. They know, like, I've got my Kindle online. So she'd confirmed what model and what Kindle we're talking about. So I expect her, if not to know personally, I expect her to have, like, a checklist of how it works. So um, eventually I was like, right, let me list out all of the things that I've got. So I gave her the list of options and I was... I, after I gave her that list of options, she was like, okay, well, can you click on this thing? And she named another thing that wasn't on the list. So I was just like, that thing that you've just mentioned, you know, um, change change uh, account settings regularity or some shit like this. I was like, that, that doesn't exist on my Kindle. So she was right, okay. Um, I'll tell you what then. Uh, let's take a look at this problem. Could you screenshot the Kindle um, page that's got the issue and email it to us? And I'm just looking at my Kindle, and I'm just like, bitch, are you crazy? You can't fucking screenshot with my Kindle Paperwhite. It doesn't do that. Obviously, I never say these things, because I appreciate somebody who's working on web chat probably isn't just talking to me. They're probably talking to two other people at the same time. And if Amazon is a company that's making something mental like, you know, a billion dollars every month or something, then they're probably cutting corners somewhere, and it's probably a really shit working condition for everybody else in the staff. So um, obviously I'm being super polite the entire time, but I am freaking out at my end. Um, so I'm just like, I can't, you know, it doesn't do that. The Kindle doesn't have a screen grab capability. She didn't say anything. She wasn't even typing, you know, and it's like agent is typing. So eventually I was just like, would you like me to take a photograph of the screen? And then I could email it from my phone. So now I'm leading the fucking conversation on her behalf. So she's like, yes, please do that. So I got the front page of the Kindle. It's clearly got the banner and the issue on there. Real, real clear picture, send it over. So she confirms, oh, I see, it's this banner at the bottom that you're having an issue with and you're looking to remove. So I'm like, yes, as mentioned, that's exactly what I'd like to do. Guys, um, this episode, if we have to roll over, I'll make it longer than an hour just to make up for the fact that I'm having a mumble, but I think we'll still fit it in. Um, So anyway, uh, she says to me, right, well, could you try clicking the X um, in the corner of the banner? That should get rid of it. And I'm just like, you motherfucker, because... There's no fucking X in the corner of a banner. It's not a banner that works like a web page banner. So I said to her, um, I can't see an X. So in a very polite way, I just said, oh, can you see an X in the screenshot that I've sent you that you've confirmed receipt of that maybe I've missed? I didn't get that deep, but I was like, maybe I've missed it. Can you see an X in the image that I've sent you? So she goes, no, I can't see an X. 
So I'm just like, you trying to make me press an X that you already know isn't there? So her follow-up is maybe if you hover the mouse over the banner, an X should appear. I'm just like, are you fucking... I'm taking crazy pills over here. I'm just like, the mouse? The motherfucking mouse? There's no... You can't plug a mouse into the Kindle. Anyway. So I said, you know, it doesn't have a mouse attachment. And the advert doesn't work like that. I just use my fingers on the screen with this particular model of Kindle. So I say to her, just to double check, this isn't the Kindle Fire that I'm having a problem with. It's for Kindle Paperwhite. And she's like, oh, yes. I know it's for Kindle Paperwhite you're having an issue with. I am sorry. Whatever. So I'm just like, you, you can't hover over it. It's just you press it or you don't. So she's just like, okay, well, I'm going to send you over to one of my specialist colleagues because um, we're having problem fixing the issue and i'm just like yeah the fucking problem is is you have no fucking idea i'm like by this point i'm just like am i on amazon's web help or have i gone to the wrong website am i on a different website and i'm it's my fault anyway she passes me over to somebody else uh and this lady it's just like blah blah what's the problem and i'm trying to literally just repeat to myself having trouble with the spanner down here it's appeared ever since i went online and this person just went, oh yeah, okay, I can see that, it's on your Kindle, um, I can remove that for you. Within a minute, my Kindle screen flashes, it's been updated, the banner is gone. Just like that. So I'm just like, oh, fantastic, there we go. That was a little bit long talking to the other lady, because it took a long time before she responded to each query. Um, but the job's done, I can go and live my life. And I was happy to do that. I was on the edge of the cliff, but I wasn't falling off the end, freaking out. But then this fucking, they just, this exit sentence was happy to help, and um, in this instance, there is no charge. And I'm just like, I'm like Columbo, right? You, you think you've gotten away with the murder, and I'm walking out the door, and then they said that, and I'm just like, just one more question. So I'm like, oh, do you guys usually charge for that? And they said to me this, um, the offers... The option to have offers allowed on the Kindle is a setting on your Amazon account, which you've had turned on. Um, so, yes, we do. We sometimes there's a $20 fee um, to manually change those settings on your behalf. Sometimes there's a $20 fee to manually change a setting on your behalf. A setting which I can't change for myself to remove an advertising banner that they fucking put on there two weeks ago. It's not like I bought the Kindle and Kindles naturally come with adverts. The Kindle was fine until I connected it to the internet and Amazon put a fucking advert. I was freaking out. I just couldn't fucking deal with it. So guys, obviously again, I'm polite to the people I'm talking to on web chat. They're human beings, I get that. But did you, is this like a known thing for Amazon downloads adverts to your device and then sometimes charges you if you want to use your device normally the way it was working before. Ah. I ah. Oh, my goodness. I, I could have punched a sack full of kittens after that. I was, ah, oh, fuming. Don't even ask me about Microsoft web help I needed for a webcam problem. Don't even ask me. Anyway, guys, what range of games would you put on the PlayStation 1? Let's bring it back down. I am sorry, I really just, I needed to get that off my chest because I was chewing over that memory for a while. And uh, <laughs> this is like a two-way conversation, guys. I get to read your comments. Sometimes you have to hear what I've got to say. But that's like the cheekiest fucking thing I've ever heard of. Unbelievable. Uh, hey, I'm Carl says, yay, more Mikey Boy content. <laughs> Not yay anymore, mate. I miss tuning into DWM every week. Oh, thank you. I've been binge watching a series to feed my fix. Ah, oh, welcome back. Also, rest in peace, Stan Lee. You've lived your life to the full and have been an inspiration to so many. Absolutely, dude. 100% agree. Hmm. Uh, Dan Hong Liang says, rest in peace, Stan Lee. Also, could you review Krita? Uh, also, just say Dan, please. Oh, sorry, Dan Hong Liang. I'm sorry, it's too late. I've gone full name again. I can't help it. I just say what I see. And uh, Emmy, oh, by the way, uh, yes, as mentioned, software reviews in the future, just just not immediately. Uh, Emmy Candea says, really great tribute. May Stanley rest in peace. Thank you, dude. And Kid with a Squid says, the man, the legend has fallen, but his work and legacy will always stand strong. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, a quest of Ventusokas says, Happy belated birthday, Mikey. Thank you very much, man. Glad to hear that you're feeling better. Oh, dude, so am I. And, ooh, excuse me, Shane Bird says, Trying to code and I just lost my shit when you sung the Imagination song. Gotta love some South Park. Get that to you, my man. Oh, yeah, you know it, mate. You know it. That was prime South Park back then. Um, I'm not really sure what South Park's about anymore because I was out of the loop uh, seasons and seasons ago. Um, but I understand that it's like this... 
really long social so wait socio socio political meta thing now season by season they have these meta themes that run the entire way uh, crop the great one says i like the new roundabout intro nice touch thank you and cool beat slider says i like that stanley drawing he's my he's the famous marvel comics drawer that is who he is or was oh my god luna hollow art says rest in peace stanley guys this is just the theme of today's episode i think it's just really uh reading through your tributes and messages about stan lee which i agree mostly with um absolutely but uh, i do apologize anybody listening in who usually gets a bit more talky talky really we're all just remembering the man himself solid snake says hey mikey hello solid rule 34 because you're 34 oh <gasps> fuck solid snake get yourself a can of coke good sir get that man a cup of tea i t- that ad- i I can't believe I've not made that connection. Oh my god, this year, between now and the 16th of November 2019, is Rule 34 year. Fantastic, I'm going to adopt that. Uh, and also, he's got a gun. Is that a reference? Is that a weapon? Is that a joke? Jo- yeah, look. It's a... That's a deep uh, YouTube reference. So there's um, the JoJo reference situation, but is that a weapon? Is also related to uh, Film Cow and um, the adventures of... I want to say Bino the Elephant, so it might be a different elephant altogether. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Martin Gar says Stan Lee, the modern Edison. Ooh. And Hector Trejo Chavez says, My comics love started because of him. Miss you. I bet he misses us too. And I, I have the same electric kettle, says the Super Elite. Hmm. <gasps> Oh, you can get a full kitchen set in that deep red, but I only had the kettle, and it's an old, old, grimy kettle as well. You don't want to pause that intro, because you can see how skanky it really is. Uh, Jack Silver says, Happy birthday, old man Mikey. <laughs> oh, Jack. Thank you. And Crimson X says, I'm really going to miss Stan Lee. Oh, uh, don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there together. Brit Time Shade 2006 says, Yeah, you're back. I really missed you, and I'm glad you're feeling... Guys, there's been so many... There's been two waves of kind messages here. You're just being really kind to me, which, you know, keep it up, thank you so much. I don't deserve it. And also really kind about Stan Lee. Yeah, man, it's that's like a... It's like bittersweet vibes right now, right? Uh, Conrad Kaluzny says, Happy birthday. Thank you, Conrad. And Tatsumi Kun says, How is it that you open your channel in 2013? How passable subscribe 200k for YouTube is missing with us? What? Uh, what? Oh, bear in mind. Um, I didn't... Wait, how many years? Eight, seven, six, five, four. Um, I didn't actually start YouTubing in 2013. I just made this YouTube account in 2013. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I was just just a user, a microphone abuser. Um, and I only actually started... Beca- oh my god, I hate this term. A content creator. Um, three and a half years? I honestly don't know. About three and a half years-ish. Uh, but thank you very much, Satsumi. I'm assuming you're just trying to say something uh, positive there, somewhere inside of that message. Uh, Mighty Geek Studio says, Rest in peace to the man, the myth, the legend, indeed. Similar vibes from Lost. And Akira Ishin says, Inktober went like this. Perfectly fine until the last week where I had one day off from work for the next two weeks. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that one day off for the next two weeks situation. If you miss one day of Inktober... It's so easy. It's like um first two weeks of a diet where you're just like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not not going to do it after all. Uh, Javier Castellon says, rest in peace, Stan. Absolutely. And Rossman Ultra says, happy birthday, good sir. Why, thank you so much, Cha. Channel Lab or LABB search Excelsior. Indeed. And Oswango says, that was one pure ass man. Rest in peace. Absolutely. And you know what? And by the way, I am absolutely not tiring Stan Lee with any of these kind of brushes or anything like that. But you know what, like, we live in a kind of, and I know it's not sad, it's because the sad thing already happened, it's just sad that we're only realising now, but when you're kind of like my age-ish, we live in a generation where a lot of the people that you used to watch and look up to on children's TV back in the day, it turns out that a lot of them, not all of them, and absolutely not Stanley, but it does turn out that a lot of them uh, were pedophiles or rapists, and like especially in britain like there's this went through this horrible spate like a few years back where we just started to realize that loads of children's tv presenters were just abusing kids and stuff so that's kind of a really fucked up time so i just want to take my hat off to stan lee to making it all the way to the end um and he's one of those people where there hasn't been this big hurrah about him like touching kids or some shit like that so and that's that's like seems like a really low denominator. Oh, well done for not abusing people, but honestly, well done, well done, because you're at, you're at a position of power, right? So maybe these guys get tempted, or maybe just children. No, 
Oh, I was going to go off key there. I was going to make a horrible joke about children were probably more attractive in the 70s and that's what did it. But honestly, it's not really a topic to joke about. I do appreciate. Actually, you can joke about anything. I think comedy should be like that. But I appreciate equally people might take offense. I don't really want to, you know, go down that rabbit hole. Not just now. Did I say this is one of those rambling series midweek? Uh, Grim the Stun Warrior says, Stan Lee Chan? Absolutely not, Grim. There will be no Stan Lee Chan whatsoever. And It's Lorenzo says, Where's the tutorials? It's Lorenzo, we've only just started again. I hope you've seen uh, my Super Basics Photoshop tutorial that covers the things you really must know um, and really just covers a lot of things where I assume everybody already knows whenever I talk about anything in Photoshop. So I did need to get one out there to make sure everybody's playing from a level playing field for bars low enough for everybody can hop over. Um, rest in peace, Stanley, says Mario and Clyde Pasta. Uh, and first like, says Brotac MTB. Thank you very much, Brotac. Gratefully appreciated. Uh, Excelsior, says subscriber. And Nicholas Correva says, Vasquez says Excelsior again. Horizon Williams, rest in peace to a serious legend. And AJ Drawing Studio says, what do you get when you cross a joke with a rhetorical question? Uh, God. Well done, AJ's Drawing Studio. I understand what you've done there. Thanks. Uh, Levin Armin says the only real hero. Oh, well, there's, there's loads out there. There's Jet Li's hero, scored by the fantastic Tan Dun. That is a great martial arts film. Possibly one of the most... Oh, it's the most expensive martial arts film in China at the time. Oh. With Donnie Yen. Oh, get me some Donnie Yen. Absolutely. And Jet Li, Fung Sai Yuk. Guys. If you want a recommendation, and again, tell me all about those PlayStation games, but if you want a recommendation for some old school martial arts, Legend of Fung Sai Yuk was one of the first ones that really got me into the world of martial arts. Obviously, I'm a Jackie Chan boy at heart, but it was, oddly enough, Jet Li movies that were my gateway. Back way in the day, on Channel 4, way, way back in the day, back when you only had four channels, at like half two to half four in the morning, they might show a random Chinese martial arts movie. Fucking Amazing. Amazing times, that's all we got back then, before the internet. Aaron Davies says, Hey Mikey, love the video. Thank you, Aaron, and I'm just wondering if you've played Clone Drone in the Danger Zone. What? If you haven't, that's cool. Um, yeah, I haven't, but let me just give that a quick look on the old Google. Seeing as you've mentioned it. Do 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 images. Oh, it looks like it it looks like a Roblox combat game or something? Hmm. Uh, yeah, not really my bag by the looks of this kind of thing, but thank you for the suggestion. Uh, the second question I want to ask is, how's life? Not a weird question at all. Aaron Davey. Yeah, other than the fact I'm free freaking out about web chat standards at the moment, life is okay. Um, if you're kind of asking after, like, what's going on with the house and mum situation, uh, I'm still in the... So, really quick overview for people who don't know. Uh... In order to pay my mum's care home fees, the house I've kind of grown up and lived in has to get sold. Don't worry about it, it's not a moaning thing, that's been the situation. I got this news years and years and years ago. Not that many years, but a long time ago. Um, and it's just dragged out and out, to the point where I can't believe I'm still in this house. Because basically, like the courts have to like go through a solicitor and sort of say, yes, this house now needs to be sold and you, Mikey, have to move out. Which kind of sucks, because I did expect to inherit this kind of place but whatever i'd rather my mum was in a good care home than i had like a house that like because i can just get a, like rent and stuff like that but um very very surprised to still be here because i basically um got told by the solicitor i was gonna have to move out in june so i moved all of my stuff into my friend's spare room sold all of my other stuff for kind of like i wasn't using all the time anymore uh, got ready to kind of leave and then it turns out the solicitor, this is, oh my, I fucking hate the solicitor. I'm not going to get into the details now. But basically, it turns out that they'd only pretended to make all of the applications with the courts. And they were just hoping that I was going to leave. So I was like, where's the letter? And they were just like, oh, well, if you're not actually leaving when I just casually pretend, then we will actually put through the application. I'm just like, motherfucker, you said the application was going to be in by... Anyway, so I haven't even fucking heard from that guy. So I'm still in the old house. I'm still here in the home that I grew up in um, with, like, you know, a minimal setup. And my poor friends have just a room that's just a Mikey room. It's just jam-packed with my things. <laughs> and I haven't spent a single night there, but I'm just using them as storage. I'm so glad. So glad they've got kind hearts, those people. I do love those guys. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you why life is okay. Um, it's not because of all the struggles and hassles and shit like that. It's because I'm very, very lucky to have some friends that I proper love. Um, and they are essentially my equivalent of family because I don't have much on this side of the uh, waters. Um, and that's kind of what makes life okay when you've got uh, support from people like that. But I am really, really abusing the hospitality at the moment. Aaron Davey, 
How is life treating you, good sir? Um, Tio Quack Morietta says, Vinegar? Okay. And Mr. Crayon, Mr. Orange Crayon says, I cried when I heard. And Z Puddy as well says, Rest in peace. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Guys, we did need to talk about Stanley. He was an absolute game changer and a big boy in a situation. We lost one of our fallen heroes, but. You know, he had a good innings, as we've said, and let's look to the future. Let's partly look to the future by bitching about what's going on in PlayStation games, but also let's look to the future because I need to stop recording this episode and crack on with those uh, Patreon rewards as ever, which very nicely segues me into saying thank you so much for listening, you lovely people, and a great big shout out to those rather fantastic patrons on Patreon. As you can see, those scrolling names, they scroll a little bit quickly these days. I mean, that's awesome. It's because there's a lot of you. But I'm just wondering if, like, maybe I need to put two rows of scrolling in so we can scroll a bit slower. Uh, it feels like, um, is it, what was that Kent Brockman show where, um, it was like Nightline of Kent Brockman and they accidentally, it's the one with the, Mona, the gummy Venus de Milo and uh, they have to do an apology bit at the end for all of their mistakes and they scroll it at a billion miles an hour. But I basically feel like I'm doing that, so I don't want to show you any disrespect because you guys support me, and I really appreciate that. But um, extra big shout out to Nemu Nemuditor, guys. God, your name always ruins me. Nemuditor, Kidiyama, Epic Kara, Andrew Eppers, Zenith Six, Joshua H, Gabriel C, Breton F. I think I've done surnames again. Mateo E, Homongi L, and Zahaki. You guys are the high tier, the experimental group for guinea pigs, for test bad boys, and the guys who are just absolute fucking champions among many of you and for those of you who aren't on patreon don't worry about it thank you so much for just watching this video give it a like give it a thumbs up share it on the medias and whatever it is your kids do these days and just hanging around and watching the videos really helps me out so thank you each and every one of you um talk to me about playstation one games because that shit kind of gets my juices going <laughs> i'm not gonna lie and uh, just have a really good week guys and i'll see you next time take care your heart